So back in July, the Outer Wilds modding community hosted our second mod jam. Entrants had two weeks to create new mods for Outer Wilds, with cash prizes offered to the winners. I already posted my blind playthrough of the first place winner, Hearth's Neighbor, and now it's time to show off the second place winner, Tesseract's Secret. If you have Outer Wilds for PC, I totally recommend leaving the video now and playing through the mod yourself if you haven't played it already. Now just two things to note before going into this video. One, I played a bit of the intro in advance because I wrote some of the code library that this mod uses, and I had to fix one of the main features the mod was using. So I had to play the start to verify it worked. I uh, figured I should mention this because otherwise it'll sound weird when I start talking about fixing bugs in a mod that I'm doing a blind playthrough of and judging for a contest. I wrote supporting code for the mod, and in fact for all the contest entries, but I didn't actually work on any of the mods directly. And two, I had my music off in the game because I had been recording some b-roll before or something and I forgot to turn it back on. Very sad because Outer Wilds has great music. Please forgive me, I realize it about halfway through the video and I turn it back on. I forget how this one's supposed to start. I think they tell you to go to the observatory. Hey look at this, the statue of Miss Eyes. Bet you wish you'd seen that happening, huh? Sigh, me too. I'm not even a little close to understanding what's going on with this statue. So there's something you needed. I recalled that you wanted to tell me something about my signal scope before I launched into space. Oh yes, that's right, of course. Here's the launch codes, and I'll take a quick peek at your signal scope. Hmm. What is it? Everything seems to be in order. Your signal scope is in good condition. Although recently, I've been hearing that some frequencies are acting a little strange. Shouldn't be a problem for you or any frequencies that we use, like the deep space frequency or the ones the travelers use. Not even the weird frequency coming from the rock we've got on display here. I take it that's the, uh, the quantum fluctuations. But if you find any other frequencies, like from the Nomai for instance, can you do me a favor and check out the Quantum Grove Crater? Supposedly, it's causing signal scopes to incorrectly detect frequencies. And if yours breaks, I'll fix it right up for you. It only takes 30 minutes, so it shouldn't be a problem. I'll check out the crater. All right, take care out there. Right, so a 30 minute fix isn't gonna be happening when we're stuck in a 22 minute time loop. Right, so they said that it would mess up the Nomai frequency. So it would be the distress beacon. There's these distress beacons on Ember Twin, there's one on Brutal Hollow, and there's one in Dark Bramble. It's so just saying that from the distress beacon frequency something in here should have now modified it and it is no longer behaving correctly apparently as we can see that yeah now when i point at the hourglass twins we're not actually detecting a signal and instead appears to be one coming from just an empty point in space see that this planet was actually cloaked. So <laughs> this is the part that I've already played up to because the the cloaking mechanic <laughs> was broken. So I had to fix it to make it work. You can see that if we pull away from the planet it continues um, the cloaking field is only visible from the shadow that it's putting across the sun, blocking our view. Alright. So, let's see what they got on. Okay. Jeez. I 
I think I ought to just land. <laughs> Um, and now looking around, actually, I can see cloaks are still broken because I shouldn't be able to see the sky right now. Damn it. <laughs> That's my fault. Okay, so I don't know why it's, you know, flickering between saying unknown and escape pod 2. That's a bit strange. It is certainly an escape pod, though. I'll give him that. Kestro says, How's the signal hijacker coming along, Solara? Solara says, So far, so good. Most of our original distress beacon was salvageable, so we should be okay once it's up and running. One small problem is that it'll only affect signals coming from a certain direction, but we can manually rotate the signal around for a radar-like effect. Should help the others track us down. Excellent. Lotus and I have thoroughly searched the planet, and while there were signs that intelligent life had previously been here, it doesn't seem like they're here anymore. Actually, where is, it? Where is Lotus? Uh, Kestra says, I left Lotus to come and check on your progress. He's still looking over the structures we found. Do you think it was a good idea to leave him out there alone? This planet is small. He'll come around eventually. Shouldn't risk it. Here, the signal hijacker is in a usable state. I'll leave it here and we'll look for Lotus. Hang on. What's that huge structure in the sky? That wasn't there before. Yeah, I mean, I'd imagine that this would be... Uh, Somewhat hard to miss. <laughs> Is there a way into this escape pod? Uh, seemingly not. At least from up here. Signal identified escape pod 1. sure if I agree with that. <laughs> you can't actually go in here. You can sort of see that these escape pods were built for like many people to be in them. And so far we've only heard of three no my Escape Pod 2. I thought you were escape pod one. Collision with unknown astral body imminent. Brace for impact. Uh, scanning local environment. Scan complete. Breathable atmosphere detected. Water source detected. Detecting inorganic structure. Verdict hospitable. Are you normally able to just hear the signal like that? bit ob obnoxious. <laughs> okay. right. So maybe I should have brought my ship with me because it seems like I'm just gonna have to explore this planet. Uh, maybe see what happened to Lotus who was separated from the rest of the group. What I'm wondering are... Are we moving? Are we rotating at all? I guess the planet's not rotating. Because the stars aren't appearing to move in the background. But the planets are. So I'll take it that means that we are orbiting, but we're not actually spinning on our own axis. Lotus. Another one of these. Outwardly, it looks the same, but with a different colored seal. Perhaps there are no intelligent life forms living on this planet. I mean, sure, the I or anyone else would have run into them. Maybe these were left behind? I can't know for sure, but I can at least check out the others. Yeah, 
I suppose I can uh, force my way through that. So you said there were two more of these? Now this is something, or on closer inspection it's more disappointing than the other objects I've seen around here. Surely this confirms that nothing actually lives here. This structure in particular seems to only serve an aesthetic purpose. Maybe this is equivalent to planting a flag? Plenty of other spacefaring species have done the same on far less hospitable planets. Then again, building a whole monolith is more involved than planting a flag. Hold on. What's that down there? <laughs> Ship's a bit far away for me to go get uh, fuel now. So down there, he said. Oh, he was over here. Okay. Oh, this is Kestrel. I thought this would have been more of Lotus. This is where I last saw Lotus before I headed back to the escape pod. Solara, where did you two go before you parted ways? We had found two structures, one on a small island and one amongst the cliffs. The gigantic cube structure above us wasn't there until I came back to check on the signal hijacker. What is it? I just had the strangest feeling as if somehow Lotus was standing right here. Not next to us, but exactly where we're standing. You're not going crazy, are you? Is the air here making you go crazy? Hopefully not, but anyways, I know the only place is we, or at least before splitting up, I haven't checked the rivers. I've read that weirdly. Maybe it's written weirdly, I don't know. If you've already checked out the island, I guess that only leaves the smaller rivers. Yeah, so I mean, buddy came down here, Thought he saw something and he vanished. Get some fuel. We can sort of review what we found so far. Right, so that wasn't a, a mistake that that was escape pod 2. This is just the second escape pod from a different uh, vessel. I have a ship. Maybe there are two recordings here? Pretty sure I only read one. Kestrel, is everyone okay? I didn't expect that we'd crash into a rogue planet, though with the stars becoming increasingly unstable, we should have expected something like this would happen eventually. Okay, so this occurs after the Nomai originally came to this solar system, because they didn't have any concerns about stars being unstable. Solara, everyone's a little shaken, but fine. Of all the places to end up, this planet seems like it has the resources to keep us alive until we can contact the other escape pod. There may be one slight issue with contacting the others. And what might that be, Lotus? Our distress beacon was damaged in the crash. The others won't be able to track us down without it. Not to worry, Lotus. During our escape pods launch from the vessel, it seemed that the first and third pods were on course to end up relatively close to each other. While it's reassuring to know that the others are likely safe and reunited, what does that mean for us? It means we can use what's left of our distress beacon and hijack the frequencies from the other pods to point straight to us. And we can all rest assured that eventually they'll be found by the others, or perhaps even by another clan. While you're doing that, Solara, the rest of us will have a look around. Oh, sun's looking pretty red. Right. 
right, so this is the structure on the river they had mentioned. Or on an island, rather. That's the monolith, and oh. There is a... Oh, this is <laughs> right where... I mean, it does make sense. Yeah, this is the one where they're talking about, like, oh, Lotus disappeared. We should investigate the rivers. somewhere. Oh. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. I'm not going back through there. I mean, I'm pretty impressed as in like, you know, where, you know, more by the, the technical aspects of this like where is this actually located in the game that's interesting lotus now this is really something for real this time I'm still not sure where any actual life forms are but whoever or whatever they are have managed to build some sort of tesseract i can change it back and forth between two states but is that really all there is to it and i'd better watch my step it seems as though the gravity around the Tesseract is unbelievably strong and could tear me apart, or crush me, or do other unpleasant things. Alright, so this is currently in like the, the blue state. And you're telling me I can make it this state? Did that change anything? Uh, yeah, <laughs> it did a little move. Okay, so maybe that has done something. Oh, wow. That, yeah, that is some strong gravity. But as far as I could tell, I couldn't actually leave back the way I came, right? Never mind. I was able to leave and everything is yellow and oh. Yeah. <laughs> uh, quite the change. Kestro Lotus, there you are. It's Lara. We're quite fortunate to have found you. Next time you find something, please, please, please come back and tell someone about where you plan to go. I mean, Kestrel told me to... Anyways, what exactly is this place? Did we get transported to another planet? Not exactly. It seems that whatever life forms that were here before us were able to find a way to manipulate the fourth dimension. That's time, right? So are we actually on the same planet in the future? No, that's a common misconception. I suppose the Tesseract on the interior caused this? As well as making the giant structure above us appear? That's the theory I'm going with. But I have yet to fully explore this side of the planet. Well, I mean, it's nice to see that my ship made it through. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, and I can go inside it. 
Oh yeah, and this is that little island. What the hell is this? <laughs> Slar. It's a miniature scale of the planet. Well, it's pointing north. It must have some significance. I was up there before you two found me. It's just an empty crater. What? <laughs> I mean, no, I agree. What do you guys mean? Or I head up to the poles. I'm gonna check what's in this one. I don't recall even seeing that one in the original planet state. Uh, go in a circle, go orange, go blue, go to the monolith. Kestrel, a series of drawings. So there are. You know, for life forms that can use the fourth dimension, they do seem to lack artistic talent. Like you could do better. I can. Not that this makes this discovery bad or anything. Regardless, it seems like they've, they've stringed together to form instructions. I get the tesseract, but what's the circle? Like moving around in a circle? Perhaps it means moving around the perimeter of something. Looks like it might have some sort of effect on that monolith I found before winding up here. Yeah, what, do you just go in a circle <laughs> around that, uh... That empty crater on the North Pole they mentioned before? Did I go in this one actually? Oh no, this one is blocked. So maybe on the other state it isn't. Despite the other seals disappearing, this one is still intact. Never mind, so it was probably still intact before. The others were unsealed after you messed with the Tesseract. Unsealing this one probably won't be as easy as flipping back. There must be clues somewhere. Let's retrace our steps. Look at the other structures again. I'm sure we'll figure it out. use my ship just because I want to use my mini map to see where north is. I mean, just like <laughs> going in a circle. I'm trying to remember too, is it clockwise or counterclockwise? Does that matter? I'll try both directions just in case you know, it triggers something. It'd be really funny if this doesn't do anything. And I'm just kind of walking in a circle for no reason. Alright. Now... Sure, I'm gonna have to find that cave I originally came through. Um, oh yeah, is the monolith in this state of the planet? Since it was in a, a small river nearby that. Right, I'm sure. <laughs> Why should I park up there? I'm not getting back up there, I don't think. Let's 
try using the ship instead to find it. I also imagine that the sun is going to explode any minute now. And there it is. <laughs> Quick escape into the Tesseract. I can't get it. I wonder am I far enough away and it's gonna just loop me back? Yep. So that totally means that I, I have music off. That's my bad. I have music off. That's sad. I'm living a sad life without music. All right, the real test of uh, if this mod is good or not is going to be, can I just log back on to the Tesseract? Mark location on HUD. Very nice. This is clearly a high quality mod. Never mind, yeah, cloaks are just very broken. That sucks. I swear I fixed them. I've already procrastinated playing these mods for like over a week because I was trying to fix all the bugs that had started popping up. So I'm just gonna play the mod this time. So the plan here is we go to the orange dimension. Right. Okay, nice. There's like custom music <laughs> that I was missing out on because I'm, I'm dumb. Okay, make it. Orange. Okay. Come out this side. And yeah, just so I don't lose this, I'm gonna mark it. Now I don't know. They said send about going in a circle something about the North Pole being important. So if this isn't doing something <laughs> that I don't know what is. And just in case the direction mattered, I'm gonna go back this way. I hope it doesn't like truly have to be the perimeter, like walking right up against the wall. I don't know if it would be that precise. But if I'm gonna have to re repeat everything if I don't do it, I might as well do it the first time. And then we go back just in case. Alright. So we went in a circle. And then it said like orange, blue, monolith. So we put her back to blue. Yeah, and I can just leave. I wonder, like... I 
that's like very nice amount of detail you know that like my scout is still in the exact same you know position on a wall That's the ship. Uh, you know, in theory, was that it? Did something happen to the monolith? <laughs> That's fine. We have no electricity. Why is it sparking? Oh my lord. <laughs> wondering actually is, yeah, like, now that I've weirdly traveled between you know, dimensions. Ugh, I imagine. There we go. <laughs> as good a parking spot as any. Okay, yeah, this one is open. <laughs> Talk to Johnny Tesseract. Well done. You found my secret. Was that it? Yep, you won. You had a very large brain and solved puzzles. Well, I am pretty smart. Smarter than me. This is what two weeks of this stuff will do to you. Well, better luck next time. Pretend there's a credit scene rolling here. Now pretend you mash the skip key 20,000 times. Okay. Bye bye. Alright. Oh, well, good game, Johnny Tesseract. We're heading straight for the heart of the Tesseract. Uh, should we risk it? I know we were searching for stuff while awaiting rescue, but we need to actually be on the visible part of the planet when help arrives. I think so too, but at the same time, I am curious as to what this could be. Maybe. Actually, hold on. Do you notice anything weird going on? No, not that I can tell. No, not that I can tell. Okay, I see or hear what you mean. Is it actually having an effect on time? What do you suppose it means? What if the life forms who built all this mastered folding space time, perhaps as a method to travel around the universe in the blink of an eye? If it really is folding space time, would we be able to use it? We wouldn't have to await rescue, and think of the possibilities if we show this at the next festival. Uh, I suppose the only way to know for sure would be to test it. We can't know how much time will pass if we go through. Not that will age, because it'll seem instantaneous to us. Anyone who follows the signal hijacker is sure to end up where we are now, and will no doubt want to learn about this discovery too. I say we head in. Me too. Alright, I hope this doesn't take ten years. Or a more billion years. Very good. Very good writing. <laughs> um, I thought it was supposed to be sent about the, the monolith. Was that just where the monolith was? And it was replaced? I, mean, I want to... Before I jump into the Tesseract, I want to go back. I want to see, like, if that... Uh, does this document, like... Okay, yeah. This is the one talking about a monolith. Okay, so it replaced the monolith. I understand now. I thought this was just one of those three, like that third, uh, that third thing that we couldn't interact with. All right, time to jump to my death. Whee. <laughs> so I take it that Nomai just jumped in and died. That's uh, well, I'll do it to you. And there we have it, the story of three Nomai who crashed on a rogue planet, 
found a wacky space-time folding tesseract thing, figured that jumping into it would allow them to travel instantaneously across the universe, and then they all died because why, why would you jump into that? Why, why would you do that? The true secret of the Tesseract was the friends we made along the way, or something. Since this was for a contest, I'll summarize my judging notes I took for it. Uh, while it was funny that Johnny Tesseract said the little ending spiel and told me to imagine there being credits, uh, the mod framework that Tesseract Secrets used... Te sec there's only one secret. Tesseract's secret used... Oh my god, what am I even saying? This mod used New Horizons, it's a modding framework that I worked on, and New Horizons has a really simple feature for adding in your own custom credits that could have been super easily triggered by entering the Tesseract, so probably would have been easier to just put that in than to add Johnny Tesseract and telling you to imagine it do it, but I, I don't know, I guess it was a bit funny. Uh, the mod had that one you know, central puzzle, which was nice, having to figure out how to travel between dimensions and realizing that the monolith drawing was connected to the North Pole crater and getting to the end that way. Uh, the mod also did a really good job at fitting the two themes of the jam, which were bigger on the inside and hidden in plain sight. So it did the former with the traveling between dimensions and the latter with the cloaking field, so good job on that. I will say that the ending lets the mod down a little bit because I think it could have been not too much additional work to sort of tie it together at the end with a bit more of a serious ending, but you know, still very good and quite deserving of second place. Uh, thanks for watching. I'll probably get around to posting the third place winner at some point. I'm realizing now, like in hindsight, that it would have made way more sense to like to do the third place one, then the second place one, then the first place one. You know, sort of build up to it. But I'm just kind of posting these really randomly. I recorded all this stuff months ago and just never got around to editing it. Whatever. It's fine. Thanks for watching. I'm rambling. Okay, bye.